With NVIDIA's RTX 30 series close on the horizon, I feel like this is the perfect time to revisit RTX features in game, such as real-time ray tracing and DLSS. It's been around two years since these features were first announced with the RTX 20 series. I'm honestly kind of wondering whether these are finally worth considering as features. RTX On has been a heavy push from NVIDIA since its introduction with the 20 series GPUs, which for those that remember, it took months for any RTX features to actually be released in game, and when they were released, they were incredibly underwhelming. Two years later though, RTX has had some real time to mature, and when implemented correctly, the results are seriously, seriously impressive. We're talking both visual and performance improvements for some games, but not all. So with these new GPUs around the corner, let's see if these settings are actually worth enabling. So for those of you who have been out of the loop when it comes to graphics cards lately, what exactly is RTX? Firstly, it's Nvidia's series of GPUs that contain specific hardware for ray tracing and AI processing. For now, those are the RT cores and tensor cores found in the 20 series and 30 series GPUs. Secondly, RTX is a platform that enables developers to take advantage of this hardware in games and other 3D applications in the form of software APIs and SDKs. Now, before we dive into some side-by-side -side comparisons for a few of these games that do have RTX features enabled, it's important to know what real-time ray tracing and DLSS actually is and what these two effects are trying to achieve. So let's start with ray tracing, which is the most realistic rendering method that exists and it's the primary method that 3D modeling, animation, and special effects programs use. So this has been around for quite a while before it made its way into RTX. As the name suggests, individual rays are traced from the camera into the visible world until they hit a light source. This way, light, shadows, reflections, and refractions are all completely accurate, as it's essentially simulating how photons would travel, bounce, and finally arrive to the human eye. Except in the game world, it's done in reverse, from the camera to the light source, as opposed to from the light source or sun to your eye. Now because ray tracing is physics based, it overcomes a lot of the visual challenges that games have when it comes to making a scene look as realistic as possible, especially when it comes to shadows and reflections. The second primary feature of RTX is DLSS, short for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it's also in the name, it uses deep learning to upsample each frame. The goal of of DLSS is to output a higher detailed image than what you would get at a natively rendered resolution with anti-aliasing applied and provide a higher frame rate as well. So let's say you're gaming at 4K resolution with DLSS enabled. The game is actually rendering at a lower resolution, like 1440p or even 1080p without anti-aliasing applied. Then the frames are AI processed by the tensor cores in a network which has already been trained with 16K resolution frames for comparison. The desired output is a highly detailed 4K image which was originally rendered at a lower resolution. So let's jump in and take a look at how this is implemented in some current games and whether it's any good. Two years later, this is the current list of games that actually support either real-time ray tracing, DLSS, or both. It's a short list, but it is growing with some exciting titles around the corner, like Cyberpunk 2077. We'll pick a few of these titles to demonstrate where RTX has been implemented well and also not so well. Firstly, let's start with Control, which seems to be the most RTX extensive game at the moment in terms of support and adjustability, and also likely the best implemented. Let's start with some comparisons with DLSS enabled versus 4X MSAA at 4K resolution with an RTX 2080 Ti. On the right, the game is actually rendering at 1440p resolution and upsampling that to 4K via DLSS. That means we get a significant performance increase. In this scene at least, there's roughly an 80% performance uplift with frame rates that are now actually playable. But now let's crop in and take a closer look with a pretty hefty six time zoom. So not only does switching DLSS on here give us playable frame rates at 4K, but there isn't any detail lost. Text is just as legible as with 4x MSAA with native 4K rendering, 
and if anything, DLSS actually looks slightly better due to the higher contrast. That changes though when we drop the internal rendering resolution for DLSS from 1440p to 1080p, it's a lot smoother overall with washed out detail. But I think we'd still agree that this is almost as good as the result on the left, but with a significantly higher frame rate, now just sitting under 120 FPS. And those results continue pretty much wherever you look. For example, here with a 10 times zoom onto these direction signs here, DLSS is producing a clearer result compared to our native rendering on the left with four times MSAA. It also seems to be smoothing out the film grain as a side effect. It might be interpreting that as noise. Internal rendering at 1080p here is definitely a lot smoother and less detailed than our result on the left, but remember this is a 10 times zoom and some of you might be willing to make that trade off for well over double the performance. As good as DLSS is in this game though, it still can produce some artifacts. Here, for whatever reason, the reflections down the hallway are completely freaking out and are also extremely noisy. Occasions where this kind of stuff happens in control though is pretty rare. This game also has exceptional ray tracing support, allowing you to toggle it on and off for different materials or effects to suit your preference. Here, for example, enabling ray traced transparent reflections, materials like glass will now have a seriously impressive and mostly physically accurate reflection. As the character model is lit entirely from the back, it makes sense that the reflection that we see is mostly a silhouette. However, the cost of ray tracing overall, at least on an RTX 2080 Ti, is pretty massive. In this cafeteria scene, we're looking at over a 40% performance reduction for what is mostly a fairly close looking scene. Since ray tracing is physically accurate, demonstrated by the reflections of the red chairs on the left, it can potentially reveal some game design flaws, like the reflections of the paper on the right, which definitely shouldn't be there unless they're floating. Here's an example of where having ray tracing disabled looks more realistic than having it enabled. Also note the separation between the tiles in the floor that are almost completely disappeared. Here's another shot of the game running at 4K with DLSS at 1440p with the only ray trace setting on the right enabled to be ray traced reflections. The reflection in the puddle is incredibly detailed and this is a prime example of how it can produce a significantly better looking game. There's another ray trace setting called ray traced indirect lighting and the the performance cost seems to be around 8% for this scene here for our RTX 2080 Ti. Having this enabled fixes the very annoying halo effect around a player model where anything directly in front of them blocking the camera isn't fully rendered to save on performance. Now when it comes to real time ray traced shadows this is likely where you're going to see a noisy result. This is due to the low sample count and this can be overcome with more powerful ray tracing hardware down the line or more effective denoises. With this floating whiteboard for example, the denoiser just doesn't have enough rays to work with, so it kind of creates this moving blob effect. Even with ray tracing completely disabled here, we can still get an extremely convincing and real-time shadow with almost double the frame rate performance. So this is another example of how disabling ray tracing actually looks better with more performance. Not all objects in the game world will have these real-time shadows though. In this office scene here, here, the shadows under the desks are completely baked in and remain there even when the desks are removed. This is the case for most of the shadows that you see in the game world as a part of performance optimization. But moving on to Death Stranding, which is also running the newest revision of DLSS, that's DLSS 2.0, which is also in control. But here I found the results to be a bit underwhelming. For starters, I noticed clear motion artifacts on the character's body and backpack, and this can easily easily be seen without zooming in. Next, the distant terrain becomes extremely blocky and pixelated, and that is a serious problem with this game because it does consist of a lot of distant terrain. Hopefully YouTube's compression doesn't blur this out, but there is very clear blocking. This was also consistent between 1080p, 1440p and 4K, and between the different DLSS settings. Looking at image sharpness though versus TAA at 1080p, I'd say the two are very close. DLSS produces a much cleaner looking image with none of the edge shimmering effects that you'd get with TAA, which can be quite annoying, but detail is almost identical between them. And that's definitely good because DLSS is rendering at a lower resolution image to start with, and that will give you more performance. 
At 1440p though, DLSS doesn't look as good as TAA in Death Stranding. Detail is smoother and more washed out, and as you can see, the distant terrain blockiness is still there. Deliver Us the Moon also features DLSS 2.0, and here the results are simply exceptional. Before we crop in, take a look at that performance improvement versus TAA, almost a 50% increase in frame rate, that difference is huge. And with a 4x zoom, there's no loss in detail or sharpness at all, and very similar to the results that we got with Control, where we get a slightly punchier and contrastier image. When we take a look at the back of the space helmet, I'd actually say DLSS looks ever so slightly better overall, retaining a little bit more fine detail. And again, all with a pretty significant frame rate boost, DLSS is basically what makes this game playable at 4K, maxed out on a high-end graphics card. There are a ton of of transparent materials in this game and enabling ray tracing can seriously transform the way the game looks. The difference that accurate reflections makes in this scene here is extremely noticeable. It almost looks like two completely different games. Sliding the ray tracing effects to max though does drain our RTX 2080 Ti to below 60 FPS at 4K, and that's with DLSS set to the balance setting. I'd expect the RTX 30 series to cope a bit better here, and that's something I'm definitely looking forward to testing. Now on the left we have a commonly used reflection technique called screen space reflections, where only objects that are in the camera's view will be reflected onto surfaces. Here the camera can only see the character's helmet, collar, and right arm, and so the screen space reflection does its best to interpret this as realistic as possible. Except as we can see on the right fairly clearly, the entire front of the character is lit from the light above, and this is something that ray tracing can see. F1 2020 also uses the new DLSS 2.0, which we just saw in Control, Deliver Us the Moon, and partially in Death Stranding. Here, performance is boosted by 25% at 4K with an RTX 2080 Ti, and especially in racing games, the higher the frame rate, the better. There are some instances where the fencing and the tarmac can be a bit blurred out, so there is a bit of room for improvement here. In most situations though, I did find DLSS to produce a slightly better looking image, and it's definitely something I'd be enabling in this game without question. Unfortunately though, there are still games out there that use the initial version of DLSS, and although they do provide a significant performance bump, the result is a noticeably softer image. One of those games is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where DLSS smears texture and detail a significant amount, it almost looks like we're comparing a 4K image to 1080p with lots of anti-aliasing. So for those few games out there that launched alongside the RTX 20 series to promote RTX, it's highly unlikely that you'll see them updated with proper RTX support. These are games that have been forgotten about, and the developers have moved on to work onto other games. So coming back to the question of this video, is RTX worth it? And I guess this is kind of two questions in one. Firstly, is it worth enabling? And I think if you have uh, a game that supports DLSS 2.0, that is definitely worth enabling, uh, unless you notice some artifacts like in Death Stranding, or kind of like the lighting artifacts that we saw in Control, and you find those kind of particularly glaring and distracting. And I would also say that ray tracing is definitely worth enabling as well, particularly the ray trace reflections, which can completely change how a game looks, like Deliver Us the Moon looks completely different with ray trace reflections enabled. It just produces a significantly more immersive experience, but of course you do have to consider the frame rate drop as well. And the second question as a part of this question, is it RTX worth it, is kind of like, is RTX worth buying solely for real-time ray tracing or DLSS? And this one is a bit harder to answer because it implies that there's an alternative to buying an RTX GPU. And right now, at least with the RTX 30 series GPUs just around the corner, there really isn't an alternative from AMD. I guess the alternative is to wait around and see what AMD can kind of produce to compete with an RTX 3070 or 3080. But honestly, not even considering real-time ray tracing or DLSS, I think Nvidia's RTX 3070 and 3080 are going to be incredibly hard to beat. And although AMD's next generation of GPUs is said to have real-time ray tracing capability, I'm just not sure it will be able to compete with Nvidia's results, which they've dedicated a ton of R&D to get to this far, not to mention these results are two years later. So even if you're not interested in these RTX features in games, the RTX 30 series GPUs will likely have good enough rendering performance and just straight up value that 
RTX features like real-time ray tracing and DLSS are kind of considered as a bonus features, even though they are much more than that in specific games. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I'd love to know your thoughts on the current state of DLSS and real-time ray tracing in games in the comments down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.